Welcome back to Estate Agency Mastery. I've been wanting to do this episode for ages. I am joined by Oliver Howard of OHRE. About a year and a half ago, you started popping up in Southwest London with crazy videos, your energy, enthusiasm and everything. I think we can all learn from. So, Oli, you know what the question is? If you're an agent in Birmingham, Belfast or Bognor Regis, I want three tips that I can immediately implement into my business. Hit me with the first, sir. Um, so the first one is, I mean, everyone that knows me knows my favorite slogan in the world is dare to be different. That's, that's me in a nutshell. And I think that's a big thing for estate agency nowadays. And it's one of my biggest things is a estate agency has become so boring. It, it, it's so dull. Everyone is ex like the vast majority of people are exactly the same. Um, everyone wanders around in their, their blue, shiny three piece suits in their BMWs just put stuff on right move and zoopla and does absolutely nothing else after that and maybe they might pick up the phone every so often um my version of dare to be different is finding a niche that's not being filled by anyone else in my area like where i work where i started in w12 it was a sleepy area it, it, it was like it was all old school independent agents um and we managed to break that quite easily because of the modern modern methods and finding that niche my niche was the videography, um, was the marketing and everything like that. That was a big thing. But I think it's also personality traits wise, a bit daring to be different is like not being a snake oil salesman. I think that's what we get with the new hybrid models and and things like that, where people actually are just being them. They're not there to to be super salesy. They're there to actually create a relationship and be a people person. Um, and at the end of the day, our industry is people. It's not properties, it's people um so daring to be different is the big thing because if you stay the same as everyone else you're going to be like everyone else if you actually want to crack on and push on and do something and make a name for yourself or be different in a good way you, you have to dare to be different because who likes boring anymore realistically and we've got stagnated in the industry where the people that are actually putting themselves out there and daring to be different and doing something in a slightly different style are actually winning whereas five ten years ago yeah, it was great to fit the mold no one had tried ever any like anything different but now you've got the likes of like um like tanya baker you've got grant who yes he's a corporate agent but he's doing it slightly different are all like they're doing stuff that's different they are they're daring to be different and it's working now i'm not saying daring to be different initially won't either make you look stupid or very very off kilter but if you're not prepared to make yourself look like a fool for your success in the future, you're not going to do it. Everyone looks stupid at some point doing something. Apple, when they created the iPhone, everyone took the piss out of them. Now look at it, like everything. So daring to be different is my absolute first tip is don't settle for being average or normal. Go out there and do something different to everyone else. So if we take this to a deeper level, right? So you've mentioned West London was the first area you started in. Now, again, if I'm in Birmingham, Belfast, Bognor Regis, I'm going, that sounds like a really hard area to crack, right? I'm sure the agents are brilliant there. Yeah. And I'm thinking, so let's say I believe this guy, right? And and I am going to be different. Where do I yeah. start? How do I How do I take that first step to be different? I think you just got to embrace your actual human side. And and what I mean by that is like when I was at my old company, I was shackled by red tape. Absolutely. Like I couldn't do anything other than just be an agent. Um, but I'm naturally a little bit chaotic. I'm very energetic. I'm a bit all over the place. It's just like controlled chaos. And I like having fun. I, d I don't fit that mold anymore of just being normal. Um, and for anyone that's looking to do it, just embrace that side of you it, it's that simple and i know if you're in any company that is a corporate model yeah of course there's going to be guidelines and things like that and some of them still don't let anyone have a linkedin profile which i find absolutely mental um but it's just finding one what you enjoy and what you're good at like my 60 second 90 second tours at the start I like making people laugh i like running around big properties and i like making myself look a bit silly um that was perfect no one the only person that had done that before me i think successfully was there's was another guy in london and there was a guy in uh was ryan sahar he did one four years ago 
when he did it around a massive penthouse. After this, lots of people have started doing it because they realise, I'm not saying I was the starter, but lots of people have started doing it because they realise it's it's good fun and it's different. Um, but just going out there and actually setting yourself apart and finding out, do you know what, I'm actually different to this agent from this purpose and this reason. That's what I'd say. Just find that little niche and actually go for it instead of half assing it. Would it be fair to say, and I'm putting words in your mouth here, that actually our industry is so archaic that if you find a niche and run with it, which promotes you and the properties you're trying to sell and that personal brand, in the in the day of social media, that actually it's quite easy to do. You've just got to have the balls to do it. Right now, absolutely. Give it 10 years, maybe 10 years when we might catch up with the states and people actually, uh, the real estate agents over there are personalities. Everyone and their mum's got an Instagram profile. Like I follow a lady in, um, I think it's Texas. She's like late 50s and she does the most hilarious property tours ever. She's brilliant. Um, but like when we get to that generation and when like my younger sister's age of 16, they come into being estate agents or something like that it's going to change and it's going to become a lot more complicated because then you've got to really find a niche within a niche. But right now, I'd say, I throw it out there, I'd say 98.5% of estate agents, and I think that's hard, that's low, aren't doing, like, socials. They aren't doing videography. They aren't doing anything to set themselves aside. I think right now is the easiest time to break through in a niche of doing it your way because it's all so standard. We're all so... I get worked up about this because we're all so far in the past. Like the state agency stuff started in the Victorian times and it still works the exact same way. It's time for it to change. It's very easy to modernize it. Do you know what? The cookie cutter approach we could talk about for hours. I'm going to, when we're off camera, get you to send me two or three, uh, including this lady you mentioned, social media posts so our, our listeners can follow and put it on the show notes. We're in full agreement on point one. What's point two? What have you got for us? Um, point two comes on quite nicely from what we were just saying is now in 2024, where actually you've got proof in the pudding that using social media and creating your own personal presence works through I've sold other properties through social media. Loads of other people are starting to do it now. So even people with like small followings, like three, four hundred, they're selling properties through social media as well is to get yourself a presence on there. That's a really easy way to differentiate yourself straight away especially where I work, I don't know massively about the rest of the UK, but with West London and Central London, the amount of generational wealth that's there is just ridiculous to start with. So I am actually selling multi-million pound houses to 19-year-olds because the parents are giving them money. But it's also, there's a completely different generation looking for properties now than there were previously. People are actually, they're looking for a home. We know our phone listens to us. People are looking for a home on right move and they're discussing it. All of a sudden, their Instagram feeds, and their TikTok feeds are going to be property related. You want to be there to make a point. So actually having a social presence and not just sitting there and hoping that you because your sellers know you or your buyers know you, that people will know you. It's bullshit. It's, it's doing that is so important. So what would you say to people that go, no, well, I do that. I've got my I've got my work Instagram and I've got my personal Instagram. What would you say to that? Maybe you've got to work Instagram and it's, I think that's a good idea. I, 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 like, I've got to work Instagram and I've got a personal Instagram. Like my Oliver Howard London page, that's completely separate from my personal page because there is some stuff that I don't want to share with. Like now over, it'll probably be 15,000 followers by the time when this goes live is that's a lot of people. And I get a lot of like a million people a month looking at my page. There's certain things I don't want to share, but if you're, looking to try and do something with your work profile so estate agency you've got to hammer it like you've got to just go for it and i know it's uncomfortable for a lot of people to start with because it's uncomfortable for me to either get in front of the camera or put on social media because you're worried about it not looking good or getting hate you could make the most jumpy glitchy property tour that ever goes up on instagram and you'll still be doing better than <laughs> i would say the vast majority of agents that are out there um, but we're in a different era now where that is so important and it's it's gone from a it's nice to have to I now think it's a necessity full stop uh, I think there's it's a it's got to be done 
So do so. I, I read a stat the other day that only three percent of what you post is seen, if you like. Mm. So, do, what's your view on kind of paid for social or pay? If let's say you've got a property in West Ken and you're thinking I could put some money mm. behind this, or do you do it all organically? Give us give us some hints and tips. Yeah. So when I when I started, yes, I used paid ads all the time um, because initial growth is really hard to get like that that initial part where you're trying to get from zero to a thousand followers it's hard unless you get one massively viral reel it's going to be hard so what i did at the start was i did um i did talking videos and property talk uh, property videos and i gary v used to say it as well which is if you're not promoting yourself at least three times a day in different ways you're not promoting yourself enough it's that simple um so i was promoting videos either hyper localized to like people in the area i started in but i was also posting uh, advertising videos and let instagram run with it essentially and show it to the audience they think works for it um it was also and then i stopped after a while i stopped doing that because i was naturally getting the engagement um, and then after a little bit longer, I changed my style completely. Um, I went from doing uh, super, super highly edited video tours that were taking me 12 hours of time to edit um, just to music to slowing it down a little bit, still highly edited, but not in the same way um, and doing a voiceover on it. Since that happened, I've gained 7000 followers and my videos are averaging. I've only got what well, I said, 15000 followers. But my videos are averaging about 150,000 views a time. Um, it's You've got to hack the algorithm a little bit. You've got to work out what works. Um, but yes, I'd absolutely say, even if you chucked a fiver in to like promoting a video and you put five pound into six videos, you pay 30 quid for a week's worth of advertising, you're going to get more reach there than you would spending 30 quid on anything else. Full stop um so yeah absolutely at the start at the start i know big agents now that still do it as well and they keep building their following i quite like now that the organic reach i'm getting is bringing people in that actually kind of know who i am now as well and they, they like what i'm doing um because you can lose more followers with paid advertising quite quickly but um yeah absolutely 100 percent. i'd recommend that to start with fine anything any other hint or tip on social before we move on to point three um Yes, I am currently teaching my partner how to do social properly as well because she's just started up a couple of pages. Um, the tips and tricks are that you have to appeal to the algorithm. It doesn't make a difference what you're posting. You have to appeal to the algorithm. Um, and what I mean by that is Instagram, for example, they like for you to have some form of editing in their software, like in Instagram. I don't know why, but that's the case as the CEO came out and said it on a video. Um, so what I do is, the captions that I put on the property uh, on the videos are done through Instagram. I use the Instagram trending audios um, and I use five hashtags that are people think it's wrong when you like they think it's right when you um, put up a video and you put hashtag home. But actually, in the reality, there is I think there's about 15 million posts that have tagged home. You're never going to be found there. Not a chance. No one's going to see you in a million years. There's probably about 5000 posts are going up a day. Um, so you want to kind of localize it, which is why my hashtags are London real estate, London property tours, my London home, and then the the location, because they've got about 15 to 20,000 posts each, but people are looking at them, but it's enough where you still get noticed. So just use the algorithm and tailor it to how you think you can break it. Last one on this um, sneaky tip. Do you um, put hashtags on the main post and then hide them off at the side is that still a thing don't do it no it's, it's still in there like it's 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 I, I don't do it it's all it's all just in the caption and it's very obvious in the caption um i quite regularly follow their updates and speak and watch the the i said the ceo does multiple videos on how to get your reels to go and and blow up um and that was a thing once upon a time that was like that was the hack right now there's not really the equivalent of a, uh, of a hack so it's it's trying to be clever with it and i said once you get that one video that does really really well and well is kind of in in relation like you've got 500 followers and you get 3000 views that's phenomenal you've six times what like your follower rate um but then you take that and you go oh that worked quite well let's implement it again and make one small twit uh, change if that then does even better, great. Keep working on it. If a video absolutely flops, change it completely. Start again. 
makes do you know what make makes complete sense. We need to do another podcast <laughs> just on social tips. Right, I'll, I'll let you move on to your third one. Uh, we don't want to run yeah. over. Um, short no, of course. podcast, but listen, Ollie, this yeah, is sorry, one. thank you. No, it's me. Uh, what else have you got <laughs> for us? Third and final. Um, the last, the last one is um, to be, in my opinion, to be a really good estate agent. You've got to be hungry for it, and that it, it sounds so simple, but you've got to have that fire in your belly. Um, we work in a, an industry where we we pretty much well, self employed stuff. You rely entirely on commission, but even at corporate agencies, the majority of your money comes from commission. If you're not prepared to go out there and slog it and find people, you're fucked. Oh, sorry, language I don't know. You're 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 screwed from the start because you eat what you kill in our industry. Full stop. Um, and I see so many agents complaining about the fact that they're not making enough money or this, this, this. And the reality is they're hoping for people to come to them and give them their property. Where in the reality is you need to go out there and you need to hunt people down and find them. And it's so simple. People don't understand. You spend free, probably about, I mean, I could find someone's phone number, email and full name and basically their kid's school, the equivalent of about three pound 50. I think is that simple. Um, so if you're not, doing that you're not working hard enough and just sitting back and waiting for people to come to you i said gone in the past especially for independent agents and digital agents is that i have no high street presence no one knows like my company name unless it's kind of word of mouth or through marketing and things like that you have to go out there and find people you can't just sit back and wait um if you're if you're an estate agent at a night frank or a savills yeah cool you could quite happily sit back and still make 50 grand a year but with independent agents and high street agents the more people you reach out to the more instructions you're going to get and guess what the more money you're going to make it's that simple um so it's just not sitting back going out and actually seizing every day and seizing every opportunity to to win essentially there's, there's a couple of things there. The first one is my old business partner, uh, very, six, very, very successful American guy in the top 100 realtors over there, um, yeah. once drew a funnel up to me and said, real estate agents in the UK service the lead. They don't create the lead, which is why they're poorly paid. He, he or she who creates the lead, that's the hard bit. And Ryan Serhan said something the other day, and I watch a lot of his stuff, and some of it resonates, some didn't. And this one was like a kick between the legs. And it was, you can be the best agent in the world with the best scripts and everything, the the negotiation, the self-discovery bit. But if you don't have the attention, mm. it doesn't matter, right? And when agents go, I'm, I'm the best agent there is, you, you might be good at servicing a lead, but to be the best agent, you have to go and eat what you kill, right? And it's so true. And it made me realize... I need to do more podcasts, more day in the life videos. Because if I'm trying to attract agents in, does every agent in the UK know who I am? No, they don't. But well, I've got to up my freaking game, um, yeah. which is so true. It's, it's true, though, isn't it? Like, I, I could quite happily sit back and say, when I was at Marsh and Parsons, I, with my figures and my stats of the things I achieved, I could quite happily sit back and say, I was probably one of the best residential agents in the UK. That didn't come from sitting and waiting for people to come to me. I was trying to generate business to make more money and make the business. And when you are self-employed, as I said, you're going to sit back and say, and put in your LinkedIn bio, top performer, best agent, most sought after agent in the area. Yeah, cool. Congratulations. You might be, you might be a phenomenal agent, but you could take a really average agent that's got the absolute fire in them to go and take the business and find the business. They're going to outperform you every day of the week. You might be amazing at getting asking price offers. Great. If you could do that once, why can't you go out and find all the business and do it 10 times instead instead of waiting for it? It's, uh, <laughs> it's in, you're, you're, you're preaching to the converted, right? Um, I, I completely agree. One thing I'll throw in here, there's a law called Parkinson's law and it's however long you give a task is how long it will take. And I see this with estate agents, real estate agents in the UK. And that is you go, how are you getting on? They go, I'm so busy. I've got tricky exchange, I've got vendors being an ask, I've got this, that and the other. What have you done to generate new business today? Oh, I haven't had time. I'll jump on my lead gen tomorrow, yeah. but I have not had time. It is, but we, time is the one thing we all have equal, and you have the time block at the start. Again, another one of my friends who was the fifth biggest agent in Keller Williams, I sat down with him and we did a bit of an inter interview six years ago. Yeah. And I said to him, yeah. Stephen, with all the businesses that you own, because he was on about buying in the vertical and all that stuff, yeah. do you still yeah. let lead generate between 9 and 12 o'clock every day? And he went, yeah, of course I do. And I was like, but you don't need to now. You could eat team. He's like, 
Why would you ever yeah. break the system? My day will usurp me from 12 o'clock onwards. The way he chose to run is 9 to 12 is lead gen every single day. And yeah. and self-employed agents and employed agents, I don't think get that because we're like you say, we're 10 years behind the forward thinking of the of Australia. And, and you know what? I, I give them I give them their props. When you go to a when you're at a corporate agency, they do kind of set your day out for you. When I was at my old agency, between nine and twelve was call out. No viewings, it was call out. Um and when you go on your own, you kind of sat there going, Well, I've got so much stuff to do at any one time. And you don't get around to it. It's, it's so important to lay your day out properly. Like mine isn't between nine and 12 in the morning. Mine's between like six and nine in the evening, just because I think that's when people are most contactable, especially with sellers and stuff because they're at work. But um, I do that. And whether it's cold calls or cold emails, I am firing them out. And I'll have a list of about 50 things I need to do in one day. And I won't go to bed until they're done because I cannot let myself get into the habit of going, Oh, do you know what? I've done 40 out of the 50 things. I'll do the other 10 tomorrow. No, because that's 60 tomorrow that I've got to do instead. And it keeps piling up and it keeps piling up. Um, but yeah, your lead gen. I think Chris Watkins says it. Unless you've got sellers, you've got nothing. Like you could have a million buyers, but unless you've got something to sell them, you've got nothing. So your lead gen is, I'd say, probably the most important thing other than customer service and all that kind of stuff. The most important thing you can do as an agent is to go out and and seize it and not just wait for it i love that we're going to call it there i could speak to you for hours i doff my cap at what you're doing and what you're achieving i have no doubt you're going to be one of the biggest agents in london in the next year or two uh thank you so much we are going to get you back on at some point appreciate your time sir